Okay, so for my menu, the first button will go to frame 20 and stop and just display a static message. Now, the second button is going to go to frame 40 and continue playing until I tell it to stop in some other way. So I want to put a small animation on frame 40. So I'm going to jump over to frame 40, and uh, this is frame 40 on my frame 40 animation layer. Notice that's the one I'm editing. And I'll go ahead and make that a keyframe. Okay, let me move my timeline a little bit to the right. And I'm going to go to about frame uh, 52, make that a keyframe as well. Now on frame 52, I'm going to have my message develop, and I'll use text again since I used it before. I'll say, you're on frame 40. Yeah, I know we're not really on frame 40, we're on frame 52, but remember your visitor watching your Flash movie doesn't really know what the hell frames are going on. We can be jumping around from frame 20 to frame 300, back to frame 3, to frame 40, so we're really just using this as a guideline because our button is going to take us to frame 40, and then the movie will play a bit, and then we'll force it to stop at frame 52, which for me is uh, is about half a second. So Okay, so you're on frame 40, so that's my text message there. I'm going to go ahead and do a... Uh, uh, modify break apart or control B and that gets all my individual letters there and I think I'll do a uh, modify break apart again okay that turns them into uh, merge shapes then I'll do a copy jump over to frame 40 and I'm gonna do an edit paste in place there we go we got all that and I'm gonna do a right click and I'll do a create shape tween and let's see and on frame 40 I think what I'll do is I'll just mess up my text just to get it kind of funky looking um, I'll use my selection tool and I'll click away and select portions of my letters then I'll use the transform tool and I'll rotate it a bit and skew it a bit and move it off somewhere else make that kind of big look in there and what else can I do let me see I'll go over to my colors change the alpha fade fade that out a bit click on these letters and I'll also alpha fade those and maybe also change the color on that chunk so now I've got some pretty messed up looking letters and they'll kind of all blend together into my message that you were on frame 40 alright so that's my little animation now when my movie starts to when my movie is jumped over to frame 40 by somebody clicking the appropriate button it's a go to and play behavior remember there's a go to and play at frame 40 behavior for that second button it'll go there and play ultimately I want it to stop at frame 52 so I'll go to my actions layer frame 52 make that a keyframe right click go to actions at the bottom of the menu here type in a stop stop empty set of semicolon uh, parentheses and a semicolon close that out and let me do another test here so this is my movie menu develops of course clicking on button one will go to frame 20 let me rerun this here clicking on button two goes to frame 40 and plays and stops at frame 52 okay and for my third button I'm gonna want that to go all the way over to frame 60 and I want it to go to and stop there but I want it to play a looping movie clip symbol so Let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and create the movie clip symbol first. So I'll just jump over to Insert New Symbol, and this will be a uh, dancing stick figure. Make it a movie clip symbol. There we go. And I'll just do this all in one layer. I'll probably just do a frame by frame animation, and I'll use my brush tool and my considerable artistic talent and create a very lovely stick figure. And then I'm going to start to modify it a bit. So I'll jump over, um, I'll go to frame 5, make that a keyframe, use my selection tool, and I'm just going to choose the lower portion of his legs there, transform tool, and skew it a bit to the right, frame 10, F6, make that a keyframe, selection tool, get the lower portion of those legs, skew them over to the left, frame 15, F6, make that a keyframe, selection tool, lower portion of the legs, transform, skew them, to, I think they're about the same. So now I've got this, it'll just be flickering back and forth, his legs twitching around and things like that. And I see that I never gave my character a face, so let me just take care of that because that's pretty critical. So. And 
I'll just going to redraw it here so we might see the mouth and stuff jumping around a bit. That'll just add to the artistic appeal. Excellent. So this is my dancing stick figure. There it is. I'll go back to scene one. And let me move my timeline over to frame 60 of my frame 60 movie clip timeline. I'm going to make that a keyframe, F6. And from my library, I'll take my dancing stick figure and just plop him right there onto the stage. And that'll take care of that. And I'm also going to right click my frame 60 for my actions layer. And I'm going to go to actions at the bottom of the menu. Oh, I forgot to make a keyframe there. So frame 60 of my actions layer. F6 to make it a keyframe. Right click actions at the bottom of the menu and I'll stop it. Alright, let's test this out. There's the menu. If they go to button 3, that should jump them over to frame 60 where my little stick figure is dancing its heart out. Perfect. So now my movie is really a navigable uh, system. They get a menu which takes them to different scenes. They get a static message, they get a small animation, or they get a looping movie clip and we could just as easily jump back to frame one or two or three or any other frame we wanted to. And just so that we can see that we can do that, I want to incorporate a button on each of my frames that goes to that a person can go to and they can easily jump back to frame one. So I'm going to jump over to I'm activating frame 20 of my frame 20 message and I'm going to take a basic button oops I just made a little dot by accident over there that's okay that looks kinda cool and I've got a button now on here and I want to add a behavior to this button. Notice that only my button is selected. So I'm going to go to my behaviors, movie clip, go to and stop from the root, frame one. Click OK. Then I'm going to go to frame 52 and use my selection tool this time. I'll just click away to deselect go to my library, put a basic button on here, go back to my behaviors, movie clip, go to and stop from the root, frame one, click OK, and you do get this little potential warning where you may have broken the animation because basically I've got these two things on this keyframe. So on frame 40 you notice I've got just my text but on frame 52 I've got text and that shape so it's a little bit confused. It would still function I'd still get my button there though. Alright, and let's see, and I'm going to jump over to frame 60, just click away to deselect, go to my library, put a basic button on there, go back to my um, behaviors, movie clip, go to and stop from the root, frame 1, click OK, and let's test this out. Control Enter. There's my menu, frame 1 takes me to my message, the button takes me back to frame 1, Button 2 takes me to this particular message, little animation, the button takes me back to frame 1, and of course the button 3 takes me to my dancing stick figure, and the button will return me to frame 1. So that's the basics of, may, of using some button clip symbols and some built-in behaviors so that you can jump the user around from frame to frame. And remember, the timeline is really just a tool for the designer. The end user doesn't see this timeline. All they can see is what you've put on the stage so you can have them jump however you need to so that your movie looks the way you want it to look.